You may recall I had a bit of a trouble that a pin had broken off in this synchro and it turns out it's like a hardened pin. So how am I going to get it out? An old trick that somebody told me a long time in the machine shop is to use a masonry bit. That's right, just a regular masonry bit and a bit of engine oil and you should be able to drill through the pin. So let's have a go and see what happens. I hope you can see that. And you have to have your drill on the slowest speed. And there you go, look at that. So in order not to get too boring, I'm going to stop this and we'll come back to it. We were doing quite well until the little cheap Chinese uh, drill bit gave up. So we're going to try and uh, see if we can find one that's a little bit bigger. I don't know if you can see that. We got through. Look at that. Can you see it? Did I zoom in? Let's have a zoom in. I actually drilled. Wait a minute, let's stop this. So, sometimes the old tricks are the best. Drilled all the way through that pin with the masonry bit. All I've got to do now is get the remains of the pin out of the hole and uh, we should be good to go. Key, <laughs> how simple was that? So using an easy out, a left hand threaded one, I got the pin out. Look at that, no damage on it whatsoever. Yeah, who are you going to call eh? So we were, you know, we were pretty good. It was a solid pin and it was a hardened pin, but we got it out in the end. So now we can start to assemble this gearbox. I'm just going to put a roll pin back in there. It should be good enough. First of all, on this gearbox, when we put it back together, we're going to put the uh, front cover on and we've got a, a new gasket. Now, when you get gaskets in plastic, this is like trying to tell your granny how to suck eggs. You probably already know this. But there's your gasket, and it looks a lot clearer from where I'm standing, but where, where I am now it looks quite dark. But try and mould them up to the light and make sure that when you cut the, the bag open, and get into the habit of using scissors, not a knife, because you can go like this and cut the gasket, and then you're back into tear land again. Um, and just get, like I said, just get in the habit of opening bags very carefully, don't rip them open because these are really fragile so you're going to rip it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some blue Hylomar where is it there? There we are. I'm going to apply some blue Hylomar to this paper gasket and then we're going to clean up the face and fit the gasket. So before we fit the front cover. I'm just going to put a bit of uh, paper towel and some brake cleaner around the, the edge there and same in the, the cover just to make sure there's no grease got sprayed about when we were doing it just give it a bit of a, a clean up. Now something interesting to notice here apart from this but what I like to do is just put a bit of grease on these uh, oil seals just to give them a bit of a fighting chance without drying out before we fit them because if you've probably noticed on this cover the gasket goes all the way around here so the oil un unlike the LT77 oil used to come off a little catch tube into this here and then drop down to this bearing well this doesn't happen on this one so um, like I say a little bit of grease will give that oil seal a bit of a fighting chance and we're also going to put some grease 
around there and, not, and, and especially on the leading edge there where it goes in just to save the seal so I'm going to pop the gasket I'll put some Hylamar on this gasket doesn't look the prettiest thing but we get it on the right way around and then we'll fit the gasket so I'll put some Hylamar on, some blue Hylamar just to give it a fighting chance it's sometimes advisable to put uh, sealer on gaskets, it doesn't always have to be but I, I got into the habit of doing it and it just makes them just that little bit more um, how do we say, sealy type so we're going to put, sealy type, what am I talking about? so we're going to put this cover on like that, I line up the dowels like that there's the other dowel, there it is just give it a little tap into place, I've got my hammer like and now we're going to fit the bolts so this bit's pretty boring again I'll finish off these, torque them up and then we'll get round to the fifth gear the first job we're going to do is fit the end plate at the bottom of the lay shaft bearing here now one thing to take notice of this goes on the outside, there's some little recesses where those allen bolts went in so that's what I'm going to do now, fit that, so I'm going to pause this because these videos take a long time so I'll fit that and then we'll get back to it but again, make, fit, um, just be sure that you put this on the right way around I've just put a couple of uh, bolts in here to keep this uh, aligned up while we put this plate on uh, it's calling for putting Loctite in these bottom bolts, in these uh, Allen screws. So I'm going to clean out the threads and the bolts with a bit of brake cleaner. Stand back. Because if you've got oil on bolts that you're going to put Loctite on, they ain't going to work. So, a bit of brake cleaner. And then we can put a little bit of Loctite on. or thread locker or whatever you want to call it thread locker can also double, double up as a as a seal as well so it's very important not to miss that bit out so then I'm going to fasten these up and then we're going to torque them down to the correct setting the next thing we're going to do is fit the fifth gear on the output on the lay shaft and assemble this pot, top part of the main shaft now it says in the book that you've got to put the large boss towards the back of the gearbox sort of like this look and it's difficult to see so I'm holding it up the camera so you can see there is a slight difference in the boss here to here so it's really important that you get that right otherwise the gears won't mesh properly I'll put it on the right shaft it would help so that one's on and then we put our spacer on onto here and then we're going to look for the oil can so with the spacer in place we're going to fit the gear now this is uh, another little important thing to look for uh, the washer has got a little cutout in it and that's to let oil get down the the back of the gear um, so we're going to fit the bearing it's all nice and clean we're going to fit the sleeve and now we're going to fit the gear now if you can, I don't know if you can see this, let's have a look and see what you can see yeah you can probably see now because the boss on this gear is larger it's brought this gear out a little bit and these two per are perfectly in line now so that's a good thing so the next thing we've got to assemble uh, no we've got to tighten up the lock nut on the back 
Now it says, I've jumped the gun a little bit here because I've put all the selectors in, so I can't select first and fourth at the same time, unfortunately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jam these up with a, a rag again, like I showed you earlier, and I'm just going to put a bar on and tighten that nut up to the right torque. With the gearbox not touching the bench, but the, this shaft is supported by the, um, the hardwood blocks, we can take our little rounded punch, we can find the notch, and pin that over so it's not going to come out. That was good. So back into the vise onto the last stage. Whilst I was away for lunch, I noticed two things. Firstly, my coat is absolutely filthy. That's because I was under the Disco 2 changing the shifter cable. Secondly, when I was reading through the book, it said that I was supposed to fit an O-ring on this shaft, so I've taken it all to bits again. Um, so if you see some funky editing, that's what it's all about. Now the funniest thing is, when I took this gearbox apart, and I'm sure that there's no O-ring in there, nothing. So I don't know where that bit's gone. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of guesstimate what it should look like. I have a rough idea. So we're going to do this again, alright? So, in case you didn't see it, well you wouldn't have seen it first time because I cut it out. So again, these are well lubed up because I've had them on before. So you put the bearing on, and then this little ring, the sleeve, that goes on there, and then you can put the gear on. These are quite straightforward things to do. You get it on the right way around. All right. So there's nothing really detrimental about things. Then the bulk ring or synchro ring. Put that on. And then your synchro hub. You can see I've put a pin in here now, so uh, that should be working out well. It's just a little drive pin really, and that goes on the spline like that. And then you've got to turn this gear at the back. See, it just drops in there. So you want that there. Now, that's it. It should drop in. That was a bit more positive. So that's dropped in. Then you fit this spacer, this plate. And what this plate does, it stops those little synchro rings uh, coming out by accident and dropping in the back. Now, this is where it gets a bit tricky. Because it says now I've got to put an O-ring on here. Well, I don't really know what size it is. Uh, I've got all sorts of O-rings. So I'm going to try this little chap here. And see if that's going to do the job. So then we can put this sleeve back on. Now, as I said, to, I, I said in the earlier video, this sleeve didn't clean up too well. But I ain't got £50 to pay for a, a sleeve. If somebody wants one, I'll put one on. But I think it's alright because... The, run, the running areas where the seal goes are nicely polished, it's just the middle bit looks a bit pitted. So we're going to fit that on and see if that o-ring is going to be right. Now, we've got a little spacer ring to go on at the back. Now if you can see that, there's a little groove inside. Now I'm not sure if that's to stop the snap ring coming off or it's worn out previously. So I'm going to fit it on and see if that's going to fit. I don't think so. I think that o-ring's just a little bit too thick. So I'm going to try and find a thinner o-ring. I found an o-ring out of an LT77 gasket set which looks about the right size. And the idea for the o-ring is uh, this sleeve had got pretty beaten up with the, uh, when that pin had sheared off. So I've cleaned it up a bit and I've sanded it down, but it's got a little chamfer on the inside. So the o-ring is supposed to stop oil coming along the shaft and getting out through the back. Not good. So I'm going to just try that little o-ring and see if that's... That looks good, you know. And I'm going to put that little stepped ring... See, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be stepped 
or it's just worn. Uh, I can't really say. I don't think it's worn because when you put it on backwards, there's nothing for it to wear against. So I think it goes on this way because all it says in the book fit o ring, fit sleeve, fit spacer, fit snap ring. Can't tell as much at all, really. So I'm going to fit the snap ring on and hopefully that will push it all tight into place. So I'm going to get the pair of put these on rings away. Paracircuit pliers and try and open that out to get that onto there. And then with a screwdriver push it into the slot. Just like like that. A bit of a tap. Wait a minute. Where's my tapping stick? Where's that gone? Hold on a minute. There you are. Now, just with a little bit of a punch, there. That snapped in beautifully. Gonna be a bugger to get out. But that's gone in. Happy days, and it's not it's not loose, so that means that's gonna be fine. So the next step we need to do is put the fifth gear selector on the back. Now we've already lubed all this lot up. You put it on the side, tip it, and put it in the two dowels. Now I've already cleaned these out once and I put some Loctite on. I've cleaned them out since again. I'm going to put a little bit more on. And then I'm going to put these bolts in here. and then tighten them up. Once that's in place we put the pin through the hole with the washer select a new split pin which aren't split pins, where's the split pin pin? Oh there they are. A new split pin through the hole Bend it over, and then we're going to cut the little legs off so it looks neat. One, two. That should be that. That should work out nice now. Again, I'm just going to give it an extra bit of oil because you can't get enough oil on that pivot look. And that's that. So, even though when you take a gearbox apart and you see that, you know, you, you, you think you collect everything, um, there may be bits missing that you don't know. And another thing, as far as I know, and I couldn't find it, but for this particular gearbox, the 22C, there was no gasket set. I've had to buy them all individually. So I don't know what the original roaring looked like for a start because when that pin sheared off in there, it would have probably torn all the o-ring to bits and it's gone. But you can see the idea of the, the pin now. It just keeps this driving round so that the, the this, this piece of extended shaft here is turning with this shaft, if you see what I mean. It's locked this bit to this bit. I've got the top cover, but I sort of forgot something. Um, I'm going to take this top shifter off because there was a bit of grit in it when I was moving it around and there is a gasket under here as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these apart now there's a spring inside a spring and a little metal washer that goes on the top so if you lay those out like that and then you can take this little rubber cover off and you can see look you see there's look at that you've got to watch for things like that the dirt's got in from the top of the gearbox. So I'm going to try and get this out and clean it up before I put it on. I might have to clean that Hylomar off and do that again because uh, I didn't realise this bit was good. So I'm going to clean this up, strip it down, clean it and then reassemble it. So I've stripped down the um, selector, the shifter, and there's quite a few interesting little parts in there. There's four steel discs, two springs, one inside another. 
there's the actual pivot piece here, cover and a rubber seal. And also we need a rubber, uh, a, a new gasket to go on. Now, to get these out, these little brass screws out of here, these set your tension on your spring. These are a bugger to get out. Um, I ended up warming them up with a blowtorch just to, just to break off the Loctite because they're held in with Loctite. And that's the best way to get Loctite off. Just give them a quick warm and it, it'll make them come off. So what we're going to do, we're going to assemble this. There is a name for this, but I can't remember what it is. Piece. Another. So we're going to put some grease all over the place. Can't get enough grease. Put some grease inside there. The ball's quite polished, it just looks a bit rusty. I think it's been neglected for a long time, this gearbox. And some grease inside this uh, plastic collar. And then we're going to push it in. It looks to be the same way both ways, so I don't think there's any difference in that. So we pop that into there. And then there's two little slots on here we're going to line up with those pins. And then push it down like that. Ooh, look at that. Like a Formula 1. You can see how it works. As you're going backwards and... Let's see if you can see better. There. As you're going backwards and forwards, these don't really move too much, the pins on the side. But when you're going left and right with your shifter, the spring pressure, um, there's something to work against the spring. So we've got to centre these up properly once it's on the gearbox. But for now, we're going to assemble it just off the edge of the bench, we're going to put a steel disc in the bottom. We're going to put the springs on. And then, somehow, we're going to have to put steel discs in the end. Now, I think I'm going to do that with our old friend some grease. So, we're going to put some grease on these uh, buttons here and push them right the way to the end. Oops. One problem with grease is it sticks to your fingers and doesn't come off. So just make sure that they go right to the very end. Because that's what the little buttons here, these little screws, push onto. That's that done. Not too bad so far. I've blown out all the holes for the threads prior, so they're not going to be a trouble. I'm just going to put a little fleeting glimpse of... Uh, sealer, Hylomar, around this gasket. It doesn't really need it, but I'm just going to put some on just in case. And, you know, like I put it on a bit thick, but then I'm going to smear it with my fingers a bit. Like this, look, so it's all squidgy and pretty even. The idea of it as well is that sometimes the Hylomar the solvent in the Hylomar softens the gasket. When I was an apprentice working in the chemical works, the old fitters used to get the gaskets for the big pipes and they used to throw them in a puddle of water prior to fit them to soften them up. They didn't bother with gasket sealer, they just chucked them in a puddle. So we assembled that bit. Then we put the little rubber gator on. This is quite important, just make sure that this gator's good. I'm going to put a little bit of rubber uh, grease inside there just to help it on its way. Pop that down. There we go. And then we should be able to... I'll take that nut off there, it's going to help us a bit. Probably not. So the, the, the rubber washer fits inside this ring here, the, this rubber gator. So we're going to just gently push that down. Now we're against the spring pressure and we align up we align up the uh, rubber ring in the middle. Now there is some tension on this so be warned, it don't, you know, this is why the bolts are so long. So we're going to put the bolts back in. But we're not going to put the nuts on yet. 
All right, so I'm going to just fasten these down and we come back. Yeah, so the next thing we're going to do is carefully open this gasket. This is why you shouldn't do it with a knife. Open the gasket and you'll see it's got some special sealer on the top. And this is why it's different when you've got people do things with silicone. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our airline and you can see I've taken my support bar off the back with the, where the springs go and I'm just going to blow very lightly put my finger across the hole just to make sure there's no dirt and debris in there blow across the top of the holes so they're nice and dry there's no dirt in them because you know we could get a little bit of uh, something in there which we don't want so even though that's got sealer on the top, I'm just going to put a little smear of Hylomar just to help it on its way around the top of the box. And especially where this little joint is, uh, where the two halves come together, there's a joint here and here. So I'm going to put that, that on. The Hylomar evaporates quite, quite quickly, so you, you've got to get a wriggle on to get this done. Try not to get Hylomar in the spring holes because it might cause them to jam. Might. I'm not saying it will, but it might. I'm going to just take this uh, reverse switch off just to get it out of the way so I can do that. Now I'm doing this on this side, not the gasket, because I, you know, I, I can. It doesn't really matter if you do the, the face or the gasket, but sometimes just doing the face is uh, more than adequate. So I'm going to pop the springs in, and I'm going to try and get that camera to go up a bit higher. I don't know if I can. Let's wait and see. Well, that's the best I can do. So the gasket has a notch in it, and the notch goes where the gear, uh, the reverse switch goes. So if you align your dowels up the next thing is we put the top cover on. Now we're going to try and line up the spring holes at the end by tipping it up just ever so slightly and there we go there was one not quite in and there. Now we've got to line up the shifter in its slot like that and just I always like to double check things I'm always a bugger for checking things over and over again because at this stage there's no comeback there we go that looks good so the next thing again we're going to put the bolts in a bit boring but here we go now while I was away at lunch I did a bit of reading on this and what it seems to be is you just set these, these little screws, these grub screws, flush with the top. Now one side was really low, so I don't know what that was all about. So I'm going to put a little bit of uh, Loctite on them. I've already pre-cleaned them up. And I'm going to screw them back in again. Simple as that. And we're going to get a big screwdriver this time. and Well... I say a big screwdriver or something with a big blade. Oh, hey, they're tight. Ooh. You know something. Ah, there's a bit of there's a bit of old Loctite in the thread. I'm just going to have to tap them out. So I've cleaned out the threads. Only a little tiny bit. If you ever get stuck and, and you know you've assembled something you don't want to take it all to bits again a little bit of grease on the end of your tap when you're tapping it out uh, will take out any dirt and debris and then blow it out naturally but it's, uh, it's alright so I'm going to just tighten those down flush same with that one Ooh, that's nice and tight now and that should be set up so the next thing we need to do is take it out of the vise 
Can you have some of our toys? We have things everywhere now. We've been doing about 10 jobs at once here. Take it out the vise, put it on the bench and assemble the rear cover. So a final job. We're going to fit this end cover. We're going to put some Hylamar on the face. Just the thin smear. I've already fitted the, um, the oil seal to the, to the housing. So that should be good. Shouldn't have any problems there. This is funny stuff to put on because when you look at it you look like a real idiot putting it on but because it, it goes thick and thin you know you can't it doesn't come with a little nozzle to, to put it on with. It's a pity that really. So where's the gasket gone? Oh here it is. So we're going to put the gasket on and that's just going to stick into place. There is a dowel and it's still left in here, so usually the dowels come either out of one side or the other. Uh, I'm just going to put some more Hylamar on that side. It doesn't matter if it squidges out into the gearbox, it doesn't, it doesn't really harm it. There you go, a nice, nice even coat all the way around. As, as even as you can get it. There we go. There's the cap back on. Again, get into the habit of squeezing bottom tubes from the bottom. It's not like toothpaste. Next. Some grease on here. That's nice. And then we can fit the cast the casing. Just making sure we know which way is the top. Now we're gonna to have to be very careful when we put the the oil seal in. It said So you might have wondered why the abrupt ending to the last video. Well my battery went flat. Um so what did I do? Well I tightened up all the bolts here because we were nearly finished. So I put the bolts in, tightened them down, torqued them down, you know, we, we were almost there. Um, there's a little adjuster under here that we're not really too concerned about because the gear shifted really, really nice before and the shift nice again. The, um, there isn't another adjuster at the front. Uh, we set that up when we put the bell housing on. A couple of things to note. You'll see there's a yellow dot here, a yellow marker on the bung here, and a red one here. Well, there's also another yellow one on here. And these are the, I've made those um, stand out, so they're the fill plugs, but don't ever take this plug, this bolt out here. Because if you do, thinking it's the level plug, you're going to drop the reverse idler inside the box and then it's a full strip down again. I wonder how many people have done that. The other thing I'm going to do, um, I ran out of time, um, the bung for the bottom. Well, all I'm going to do with this, let's put it up there. I'm going to get some of those little button magnets and stick one on here before I put the, the filler in the bottom, you know, the bung in the bottom. So that will collect any bits and metal particles in there. Other thing I wanted to say, just if you want to re be really anal, uh, that hydro sill will clean off really nice off any seams. You can just pull it off, look. Wait a minute, can't when I say it comes off, it won't come off, will it? But you can just get a your nail in or something and just there, you see, it comes off <laughs> and it looks really neat, eh? So you can do that and it, it won't damage anything inside, but it makes the job look a little bit better. And the same goes for the Hylamar, you can just actually wipe your seals off and it makes it look a really professional job. So, um, there you go, LT77, oh no, I didn't, I didn't, I've got LT77 on the brain. So there you go, it's um, LT85 overhaul, I'm going to do another one. 
I might do that tomorrow actually while it's fresh in my mind and uh, that goes on the shelf uh, oh wait, before it goes on the shelf I've got to say I've got to fill it with oil uh, I think it's 2050 engine oil that goes in these but I'm going to fill it with oil A because I know it's full and B because uh, it'll prevent any corrosion but before I fill it with oil I've just got to mention this one last thing I'm going to do my pressure test so if you see the end of the LT77 video uh, you'll see me pressure test it with a smoke tester and we'll just make sure that there's no leaks but I don't think there will be I think it'll be pretty good um, so there you go LT85